Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Rotoballer Radio Waiver Wire Series. I'm your host, Anthony Aniano, here with you to take a look at the Waiver Wire for Week 10 of the fantasy football season. Don't forget, head over to rotoballer.com, check out all the great content there, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, MMA, esports, NASCAR, PGA, sports betting, whatever you're looking for, rotoballer.com has it for you. Sign up for any premium pass, use the promotional code ACES, save yourself an additional 10%. Follow me on Twitter at Fantasy, and make sure you like, subscribe right here to the Rotoballer Radio YouTube channel, and make sure you continue listening whether there or wherever you listen to the Rotoballer Radio podcasts. All right, everybody. Week 9 just about in the books. We had some injuries, right? Tua doesn't play. Kyler Murray didn't play. Chase Edmonds left the game for Arizona. Players banged up. New England backfield. Damian Harris uh, fin- didn't finish. Ramondre Stevenson got banged up. We'll talk about all of that. And then as well, uh, Week 10, four teams on a bye. The Chicago Bears. Um, David Montgomery. Justin Fields, Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney, Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, all out for Week 10. The Texans, Brandon Cooks, really all you're missing there. And the New York Giants, uh, Devontae Booker, you'll probably see Saquon Barkley when they return from the bye. Uh, uh, Kadarius Toney, who was disappointing. I got to move on from him, I think, at least for the next few weeks. Kenny Galladay, etc., etc., Evan Ingram. Okay, so let's take a look now. We'll start at the quarterback position. A couple of names here. First off, a couple of names I want to mention. In a 2QB league, if you have any reliance on Sam Darnold, take a look if P.J. Walker is available. 2QB leagues, quarterback's tough to find. So take a look and see if P.J. Walker is available because Sam Darnold's run in Carolina could very easily be coming to an end. All right, keep, be, keep an eye on the Jets' quarterback situation. Mike White... Uh, they think he'll be fine to play. Where do they go? Do they go back to Zach Wilson or do they go to Mike White? But that's really deep leagues. That's two QB leagues. In a one QB league, let's start at number one. My number one ad, uh, if you need help this week because of the buys, is Teddy Bridgewater of the Denver Broncos. Good matchup next week against the Philadelphia Eagles defense. Bridgewater has a full complement of his wide receivers, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, and Cortland Sutton, who's kind of been odd man out. And the running game was terrific last week in Week 9 with Gordon and Javonta Williams. Teddy Bridgewater, 26% rostered. He threw for 249 and a touchdown. Folks, people don't realize that's his fifth time this year of over 20 fantasy points. And, you know, 26% rostered, he's not going to throw up 30 every week. He's not going to give you 20-plus every week. That's why he's a free agent. He's why he's on the waiver wire. But if you're looking to make up for Joe Burrow, really, maybe Daniel Jones, Teddy Bridgewater, the number one available player there for me. At number two, Jimmy Garoppolo of the 49ers. And I'd probably have him higher, except for the lingering Trey Lance in that situation in San Francisco. Garoppolo now with his second straight game of over 300 passing yards. He threw for 326 as San Francisco was playing from behind. Two touchdowns, that late interception. But he does have four total touchdowns, two touchdowns. Two through the air, two on the ground over his last two games. He went 28 for 40, 28 fantasy points. Tough matchup, though, in Week 10 against that Rams defense. And then number three, on paper a nice matchup, is the Washington football teams and Tyler Heineke against that Tampa secondary that we know we can A, throw the ball on, and B, we're assuming garbage time points for Tyler Heineke against this Tampa defense. Uh, as we assume Tampa's going to have a nice big league in that Week 10 matchup. Okay, four games over 10 fantasy points for Heineke as he's coming off his bye. On the season, 12 total touchdowns, one rushing, 11 through the air. So, I look at my quarterbacks in a 1QB league if I'm desperate by week. And remember, keep in mind Russell Wilson may be back. But nonetheless, Bridgewater 1, Garoppolo 2, Tyler Heineke 3. Two QB leagues, take a look at P.J. Walker if you're desperate. And Mike White of the Jets as we uh, dissect and see what happens over the next couple of days with the Jets quarterback situation. At the running back situation, my number one ad is Devonta Freeman of the Baltimore Ravens. Only 19% rostered. I know Lev Bell got some love a little bit later in that game. But Freeman was clearly the number one running back, even though Lamar Jackson led the team in rushing in Week 9. Devonta Freeman, 13 carries for 79 yards. Also had three targets, two receptions for four yards, but a receiving touchdown. 
16.3 fantasy points for Freeman. It's his third game in a row with 10 more fantasy points and at least one touchdown in those three games. So Freeman getting in the end zone and active in the Baltimore backfield with Lat Murray still out and Lev Bell clearly the RB2 right now for the Ravens. Good matchup against Miami. 19% rostered. He's the number one ad for the week, especially if you're losing the giant backfield, Devonta Booker, if you're losing Joe Mixon, uh, the Bears backfield, Herbert, Montgomery, wherever you've been going there. All right, number two running back to add. I can't believe the name is there, but we got to mention it, and it's Jordan Howard. And I'll be honest, we we speculated Kenneth Gainwell, and then last week it was Boston Scott with t- touchdowns and Jordan Howard, but we didn't think Jordan Howard was for real. And listen, Jordan Howard is limited because he doesn't catch the ball. He's not even targeted in the passing game out of the backfield. But Jordan Howard in that game week nine did carry the ball 17 times. Boston Scott had 10 carries. Jalen Hurts kept it himself 10 times. And Gainwell, who did get a touchdown, but other than that, was fantasy irrelevant. Jordan Howard, 17 carries, 71 yards, and a touchdown. 13 fantasy points. 12% rostered. On the road in Denver, Denver's defense we know played great, shutting down the Dallas Cowboys in Week 9, but we can't ignore the volume. It's now two weeks in a row Jordan Howard has been used. He's risen from the dead and made himself fantasy relevant. Never thought I would say that this year. At number three at the running back position in a PPR format is Ty Johnson. Second week in a row, I'm mentioning him. I said it about him heading into the week. He caught the touchdown. He was involved in the passing game like I expected. Uh, Finished with 12 fantasy points on Thursday night in the Jets' blowout loss to the Colts. Two receptions, 40 yards, and a touchdown. Four carries for 21. Jets were out of their sorts as soon as uh, uh, White was injured. And then the, the lead was just something they couldn't come back from. Tough matchup against Buffalo. So Ty Johnson sits at number three in PPR formats. At number four, Mark Ingram's looked pretty good returning to the Saints in a limited role, but at 38% rostered at the very least, get him on your bench in case something were to happen to Alvin Kamara. Nine carries for 43 yards in week nine. Also was involved in the passing game with five targets, five receptions, 21 yards, 11 fantasy points, and a matchup next week against Tennessee uh, for the New Orleans Saints. Going to be interesting to see who quarterbacks for the Saints in Week 10. My guess would be Taysom Hill. So if Taysom Hill is even available, um, he could be added. But again, the uncertainty of what the Saints are going to do with him and Trevor Simeon keeps him off my quarterback list. And then finally, it's the New England Patriots running back situation. Situation I don't love, right? Damian Harris is the clear uh, running back one there. There's no denying that. Damian Harris was taken out of the game with a head injury. Ramadre Stevenson, at 6% rostered, did get 10 carries for 62 yards. And every time I've talked about Ramadre Stevenson in this, in, on this show, he's then inactive the next week, so I'm afraid to jinx it. He also had two catches for 44 yards, did Stevenson, finishing with 12 fantasy points. Again, he then left that game. Brandon Bolden was involved, okay, with eight carries for 54 yards. Two receptions for Bolden as well, finished with... 10 fantasy points. Here's the situation. Harrison is the clear number one. The Je- the Patriots openly admit the number two running back varies week to week depending on how practice goes. But if Harris were to miss some time, if Stevenson were to miss some time, you may want to grab a Brandon Bolden or a J.J. Taylor who, who didn't play really at all in week nine. Okay, so monitor that Patriots backfield. I'm not jumping in with any crazy fab bunny, but nonetheless... After the Fab runs and it's first come, first serve free agency, you want to be mindful of the Patriots' backfield as we get more news about Harris and Stevenson as the Patriots play the Cleveland Browns next week. At the wide receiver position, four wide receivers to be mindful of. Rashad Bateman of the Ravens is my number one. Eight more targets. He's got 10 or more fantasy points in his last two games, 20 targets over his last three games, and he's only 36% rostered as he's kind of cemented himself as the wide receiver two opposite Brown in Baltimore. Like I said, 36% rostered, eight targets, 5-4-52. Just needs to get in the end zone 
at this point to really cement himself as a solid flex play on the road against Miami in Week 10. At number two is Russell Gage of the Atlanta Falcons. We wondered who would take up the slack of Calvin Ridley's targets, and it was Russell Gage. Eight targets, seven receptions on those eight targets for 64 yards, 13.4 fantasy points. They go against uh, Dallas next week, whose defense struggled week nine against Denver. Russell Gage only 16% rostered, even though in two of his last three games, he has over 13 fantasy points. And like I said, this week led the team in both targets and receptions. At number three is Tim Patrick. To me, from what I've seen in recent weeks, he is a favorite of Teddy Bridgewater. More than Jerry Judy and more than Cortland Sutton. For sixth game this season, okay, for somebody with over six, with six games of over 10 fantasy points, it is crazy to me that Tim Patrick is only 25% rostered. Everybody wants Jerry Judy. Everybody wants Cortland Sutton. Newsflash. Teddy Bridgewater wants Tim Patrick. Five targets, four receptions, 85 yards, and a touchdown week nine against the Cowboys, 18 and a half fantasy points. And he goes against the Philadelphia secondary that you can take advantage of. Tim Patrick, a terrific bye week fill in in week uh, 10. And finally, Elijah Moore. He did it during garbage time, but we waited for the rookie. Corey Davis remains out, and the rookie for the Jets, only 26% rostered. Eight targets, seven for 84, and he gets the two touchdowns Thursday, this past Thursday night against the Colts. Now, I don't love the matchup against Buffalo. It's not going to be easy for that Jets offense. However, Elijah Moore in his last three games, three games in which his fantasy points have increased. 10.2, 13.1, and now 27.4. 20 targets over those three games. Elijah Moore, but everybody loved him coming into the season. It took him about half the year. But Elijah Moore starting to establish himself more and more in that Jets passing game. Okay, and finally at the tight end position, I have two. Evan Ingram, even though he's going on a bye, did get in the end zone. TD in his last two games, 10 or more fantasy points in his last three. Kind of coming back to life for the Giants and Daniel Jones. He's 40% rostered, finished week nine with 12.8 fantasy points. And finally, Dan Arnold of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you need a t- uh, tight end in Week 10, then make Dan Arnold your number one. Okay, 10 fantasy points. He's got three of his last four games over 10 fantasy points and 17 targets over his last two. He went uh, four catches on seven targets, 60 yards in Week 9, facing that Colts defense. Okay, at the quarterback position, like I said, number one is Bridgewater, number two is Garoppolo, Number three is Heineke. Keep an eye on Taysom Hill, however, and who if he gets the start for the Saints. At the running back position, go Freeman, one. Jordan Howard, two. Ty Johnson, PPR him to death at three. Ingram, four. And then sort out that Patriots situation after we get updates on the injuries to Stevenson and Damian Harris. Wide receivers, number one, Bateman. Number two, Russell Gage. Three, Patrick. And four, Elijah Moore. And at the tight end position, Ingram, long-term, he's my one. But if you need somebody for this week coming up, grab Dan Arnold. If you need one defense to stream, take a look at the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Detroit Lions. See if they're available and add them and play them against Detroit. All right, everybody. Give me a follow on Twitter at A-Aniano-Fantasy. Sign up for a Rotoball Premium Pass using the promo code ACES. Like and subscribe right here to the Rotoballa YouTube channel, and make sure you continue to listening to Rotoballa Radio wherever it is you do. YouTube, be a favorite podcast host, and SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Radio. Stay smart, stay safe, stay safe, everybody. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks.